As we wrap up this this unit, we want to talk take a look at one more way to organize data, and that is by creating what is known as a box and whisker plot. Now, the importance of what we're doing is we are a data-driven world now, and after we collect the data, it's very important that we be able to create a representation that best shows the data, but more importantly, we are able to interpret what a graph or anything that you've used to organize the data, what it all means. And so, this is our final item. A box and whisker plot. Well, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you what one looks like, and then we're going to talk about the parts. Sometimes it's referred to as a box plot as well, and so because of that, I'm going to create a box. And since my freehand attempt wasn't real good, we'll go with that one. It, in the box, we have a line, and it might be right in the center. It might be in a different place as well. I'll put it over here for right now. And then, in our box, or outside of our box, we have a tail on the right, and we have a tail on the left. And that's what a box and whisker plot is. So, let me tell you about how this box and whisker plot, or box plot, what it all means. Well, first of all, a box and whisker plot shows a minimum. And the minimum is basically the smallest value or smallest number that we have. And the minimum on a box and whisker plot is going to be the value that's right here. Now, it also has a maximum. And a maximum is the largest number or largest value that we have. And in a box plot, it's all the way at the end of the other whisker or tail. Now the line in the middle, that orange line, that vertical line, is called the median. And we've already kind of talked about the median. It's the middle value. Or middle number, if you want to call it that. So the median is located right here. Now we have a Q1 and a Q3 and and Q1 stands for the first quartile. And what the first quartile represents is it represents the median of the lower half of data. So Q1, or the first quartile, is going to be right on the left end of the box. Which means Q3, our missing item, is on the other side. And the quartile 3, or the third quartile, is defined as the median of the upper half. And those are the parts. Now, if we take a look at, before we create a couple of them, let's talk about how we can interpret them, which is, which is really a, a big goal of what we're trying to do. So, in the box and whisker plot in the notes part of, your, uh, of this video here, this box and whisker plot represents the weekly hours worked. So, the median is 22. That means 50% of the hours worked were less than 22, and 50% of our hours worked per week were more than 22 hours. We can also see that the minimum is 11, and the maximum number of hours worked in a week is 40. Now, the first quartile is 17, and the third quartile is 28. Now, one other thing to notice here is there are really four sections in a box and whisker plot. 
And each of these sections represents 25% of the data. So we've already talked about that 50% of the data is less than 22, 50% is more than 22. But it also means things like this, 75% of the data is above 17. 75% is below 28. So again, think of each of these sections as 25% of the data. So now let's go ahead and start talking about making a box and whisker plot from a data set. All right, we're going to make two different ones here. And what I've done is we, we have two different sets of quiz scores here. And a 10-point quiz was given in March, and the same 10-point quiz was given again in April. And we want to take a look at the scores to see if there was any difference between the first quiz and the second quiz. Now, one thing you'll notice when we make box and whisker plots is you notice that there's these number lines here. And there was a number line on the last one as well. We want to use these number lines because to get an accurate and to make an accurate interpretation of the box and whisker plot, we need to have we need to have the same scale. So let's go through quiz one and let's make a box and whisker plot. Now, first of all, since we've got to find the median, we've got to have the data ordered. And I've already done that for you. So if we go ahead and find the middle, we've got two, three, four, five, seven. So it looks like this seven right here, let me use a different color is going to be the median. Now the next thing I need to do, the, the min and the max are the ends, so that's pretty easy to get. But what I want to do next is I've got to find the middle of the lower half and the middle of the upper half. Well, you'll notice we have an even number of pieces of data here. So the middle, or the quartile one, or first quartile, is going to be in between 3 and 4. So I'm going to have to find the mean of 3 and 4. Well, that's, that's going to be 3.5. And I got that by adding 3 and 4 and dividing by 2. Between 7 and 8 is where the third quartile will fall, which is going to be 7.5. So now that I have that, I can go down here to the number line and I can go ahead and create everything that I need. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make a box that goes from the first quartile to the third quartile. So that's from 3.5 to 7.5. So I'm going to use my box tool. Make it as nice as I can for you. So 3.5 to 7.5. It looks about right. Now the median is at 7. So I'm going to make a vertical line at 7 to represent the median. Now my minimum goes out to 2 and my maximum goes out to 8. So I'm going to have a tail that goes out to 2 and a little bitty tail that goes out to 8 here. I can barely do that. Now what I also need to do is I need to label everything. So because with the number line I might have to guess a little bit what the values are. So I have a minimum of 2, a first quartile of 3.5, a median of 7, a third quartile of 7.5, and a max of 8. Okay, so I'm done with, with quiz 1. Let's do the same thing with quiz 2. So let's find the median again here. Okay, well, the median appears to be this 7. Now I need to find the median of the lower half. And again, there's four pieces, so it's going to be right in between the 6 and 7, which would be 6.5. The median of the upper half, or the third quartile, would be between 8 and 9, or 8.5. And the min and the max, in this case, are the 5 and the 10. So let's go ahead and make the box and whisker plot here. So this box and whisker plot, it's going to go from 6.5 to 8.5 this time. So let me go ahead and build that box, 6.5 to 
8.5. We have a median of 7 this time. Move that over. And then we have a minimum of 5, so we're going to have a whisker out to 5. And we're going to have a whisker out to 10. And once again, I'll label everything. So 5, 6.5, 7, 8.5, and 10. And again, we want you to label these items because that way it's, a, it's clear to whoever is looking at this what the exact quartile 1, quartile 3 are, the min and the max and the mean as well. So let's take a look at the data here. Well, you'll notice that both quizzes have a median of 7. However, you'll notice that 50% of the data on quiz 1 went from 2 to 7. 50% of the data on quiz 2 went from 5 to 7. So there were fewer lower scores. Now also in quiz 1, you'll notice that 50% of the data went from 7 to 8. On quiz 2, 50% of the data went from 7 to 10. So there were, there was a bigger spread and there were more, or there were higher scores on quiz 2. We can make all kinds of interpretations on the data. And so this is the final piece that we want to look at in regard to collecting data and organizing it so we can make some interpretations. And this, this unit has been about statistics, and it's just a brief overview of what we can do with, with numbers. And data is such an important part of our world that collecting, organizing, interpreting data is not something that's going to go away. In fact, with technology, it's just, it's just become a part of our everyday lives. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.